Welcome, everybody, to the Real to Real Wake Up movie review. The very first thing we are presented with is the main tenant by which the entire school is based on that of a tradition. Tradition is a simply old ideas, constantly circulated in creation, and agreement to a tradition is what assists in maintaining a consistent, unchanging social consciousness in whatever part of the world it happens to be in. What a tradition what a maintained and rigid social consciousness results in is a maintained and rigid cause to effect experience, to become more aware, which is the process we need to embark on if we do intend to recognise the true reality, that which is this isness life is, demands that we effect experience that is different to that which we have limited ourselves to. For how can we become aware of more if our experience remains rigid and unmoving? As we break routines, we then see more, which allows us then to be more and the process rolls on. If everything stays the same, if that which we decide on remains as it always has, nothing changes, and actually gets worse. A stagnation of awareness, coupled with the compounding addition of further ideas of restriction, has the awareness rather push in on itself. Awareness constricts, and this is expressed overall in the simulator of creation we are in. It deteriorates. Because the awareness entombed in an ever-restricting consciousness effects a simulated creational experience of demise that we are in. Tradition, then, is old, circulated and clung to, agreed and decided upon, ideas in creation. All ideas are cause and effect restriction, and if we don't see these ideas as the references they really are, if through what we have created, we don't recognise what we don't need, we make these ideas realities, and are resigned unconsciously to the effect experience of them. So we see here in the movie, the indoctrination, the emphasis on tradition, the control, through an agreed upon and maintained social consciousness. The beginning of the movie was very ritualistic also, the gatherings in the halls, the candles, with the apparent infusion of religion also. Religion, regardless of what form it takes, is also another created distortion and control a mechanism by the reptilian controllers. Religion representing a bowing, a kneeling, a worshipping of invented space gods, which really is agreement to individuals and their established positions of power in creation. All religions agree to the position overall of the Kalorm God, a reptilian overlord and overseer of the mental levels of creation. The whole notion of a religion is to relinquish responsibility for our own experience. That other, more powerful beings have control over our fate. 
when really we are always the deciders of our own experience, and any infusion of others or their ideas into our experience is due to the agreement we have extended to them. Religious people will proclaim how God has a plan for us, and indeed he has. The Callum's plan is to keep us in creation as agreeing unconscious and controlled slaves, and with a tradition or any other idea for that matter, they are just that, ideas. And as we agree to, we sit in the creational reality of, look at the sun shining, as the demonstration of the true reality life is. Do you see any tenets, traditions, morals, or any literal idea there? And what use is any educational system, other than to the controllers that created it, if it is simply designed to lock everyone into a one-dimensional, literal controlled position where little of the imagination is utilised. No hint or reference to real awareness is made, and aside from control, all the standardised educational systems place then the excelling students who, to pass their exams, must simply regurgitate information they have remembered onto exam papers. These students then become a part of the systems that all are designed to destroy the all-natural environment as they become additional cogs in the machine of global destruction as all the created systems of the world are designed for that purpose. Did the indigenous peoples need such education to the animals? They just simply operated in harmony and equilibrium with the natural environment. And what they taught their children made sense with the whole of life. In other words, the teaching of survival, self-sufficiency, and what makes sense with the isness, with the awareness we all are. For life is all about itself, and survival throughout creation and into the real universes. We see throughout the film the Robin Williams teacher character Mr Keating encouraging always the breaking of routines, of traditions, of how things have always been, and how awareness stagnates as a result, and is restricted if perpetual routine and patterns of behaviour are adhered to and agreed upon. Mr Keating would encourage more the imaginative faculties of the self, rather than just to remain with the mind and what it knows, what it has stored up until this point. For if we don't use the imagination, we simply refer to what we have filed as references in the memory body, the imagination is far more fluid and flexible. The ethereal body, which is where the imagination lies, is that much closer to our real awareness, absent of the greater rigidity of the consciousness mind. We also will access the intuitive part of the ethereal self, which receives then the impressions from the real awareness, that which we actually are. To see more, to be more, and constantly step into the unknown of what we don't know, 
involves taking the risk to do that which we have never done before, and this is constantly exhibited throughout the film. The Dead Poets' Society are risk-takers. The emphasis on poetry is a means to break the rigidity of the routined literal mind, because great poets, like great musicians, tend to push the boundaries of what is established, of what is known and agreed with. Poets will seek to express themselves in ways beyond what is standard and acceptable, to define things in ways never done before. All are still literal ideas, but a rearranging of words is the same as a rearranging of routines that we then experience differently than we have and have more comparable reference viewpoints to recognise the is through. Demonstrated also in the movie, where the very standardised literal interpretations of poetry Mr Keating would insist be torn from the books, that the opportunity to apply and consider new ideas be possible, rather than just to cling onto the outdated ideas of traditional evaluation, and perhaps a greater recognition of that which great poets and musicians may hint to through their creations be possible. As Wagner, for example, was providing music, scenes and settings that were hinting at the process of creation and the real purpose of his recognition. We all need these idea references, these simulations, until we don't, but in the meantime we need continue to generate these comparison references rather than sit in the realities of the old ideas for lifetimes. Very much we see in the film how Mr Keating engages with his students from more a position of equal standing as opposed to the other teachers that are very much assuming self-convinced positions of superiority. This is more a being to being, a recognition that we all are these free beings of light now, and no one is any better or worse than any other. All that separates individuals are the illusions of the decisions that they decide. The process of awareness does have us constantly creating new experiences, then comparing them with the experiences we have been through, recognising the difference and determining the new positions we have chosen as making more sense with life or not, we recognise then what we don't need and continually move forward with our awareness of process. Throughout the movie, we see a constant scenes of the differences between the very rigid and standardised schooling methods and classrooms and those of Mr Keating, where imagination, spontaneity, the risk-taking of moving constantly beyond routine, is encouraged, where naturally greater awareness would be the result. The comparison between the two positions very apparent. We can either sit in our cocoons of self-decided, and convinced limitation, or explore beyond the boundaries of it, 
to walk into the unknown of what we don't know by being more in the nowness of life, which will allow life to show us and present us with what we need be aware of now. Life is always demonstrating our next potential step, if you will, if we can recognise it and let it in through the bubbles of illusion we have immersed ourselves in through what we have decided with the personal self. The part that really stuck out to me was that the kids, instead of just sort of regurgitating information, you really had them take on an active position, like like when they went and they were reading poems and then kicking a ball, sort of sending it or whatever the idea that was. But it, it was really an active position, like you said, to always keep moving beyond what it is they think they know. So you could compare that to like uh, the real risk taking as to where you step out of your sort of created consciousness and recognize the agreement so that way you can stay in real and be supported with life rather than create phenomena and continuate cause and effect distortion. Yeah, risk taking, I always said, was um, doing what you've never done before, taking the risk to step into the unknown because uh, you can't become more aware unless you do something differently. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. So you can't become aware of anything else because you're not generating any new experiences to become aware through. To th into this movie, the uh, student wants to real, uh, risk their life and enjoy and uh, do they want, but uh, then forget uh, the base. Uh, it is uh, the uh, they do something really they wanted. Um, I think the people in this movie, uh, they have uh, some personal goal uh, and they forget a uh, real, real, uh, real uh, purpose and real, what the real things need they do it. Just uh, want to do something uh, immediately remind in, in their mind. They need to uh, do uh, deep real things and uh, uh, real and do, uh, do more, not, not just do something uh, one step or two step. Do it uh, more to be real. The demonstration in the movie of Mr. Keating encouraging his students to stand on the desks was very much that of individuals having a greater view. Mr. Keating would say to the students how it's important to see things a different way, from a different perspective. In other words, allowing ourselves more viewpoints for our comparisons, rather than resigning ourselves to rigid considerations and convictions, which would have us seeing things the way we always have, and to then experience in similarly limited terms. What you know, or think you know, what you become convinced about is what you then encase yourself in. Life is about what you don't know, and indeed what you can't know through the considerations of the literal mind. For the isness is a reality you can't consider, but a reality you must recognise through the real awareness that is aside from the consciousness of the mind and emotions and even the imagination. Very often, when we stand in more elevated positions in our real side experiences, this demonstrates the receiving of a more expansive view, and so... This would be along the lines of the demonstration in the movie, as the students 
stood on their desks. Not only do we see the encouraging of the shattering of routines of actions, but also routines of self-consideration. For how we consider the self is as much a restricting a cause and effect illusion as any other idea. Ultimately, we would strive to step aside from all ideas of self-consideration, to forget the little created self, and stand in the nowness everything of the real awareness that is aside from every idea. In the movie, we see how Mr. Keating encourages his students in this regard. The student who harboured ideas of lack of worth was very much encouraged to break these as he would be invited to yelp to unleash a barbaric war cry and this rather had the effect of unlocking him from the self-decided limitation of the idea of a lack of self-worth and as such he would go on to produce spontaneous words of expression he didn't think himself capable of. The encouraging of imagination a constant and featuring in this scene, as the student moved beyond the mental consideration of self and into the more fluid flexibility of the imaginative body. Another scene would be Mr Keating having his students marching in conformity initially, representing the rigidity most people resign themselves to, as they seek to be accepted socially, to adapt and comply with the social consciousness. But Mr Keating would then say, it's about finding your own walk, your own unique journey, and one that through the risk-taking of stepping constantly into the unknown will have you become more aware, but a risk-taking journey and walk that can't be so, if you agree to the social consciousness and limit yourself and conform to what everyone else has decided. Oh, but but uh, uh, something along the lines of what I was going to say was that the the mental considerations that people have they solidify them into a reality all its own. So I I I really looked at what he said when he said that just when you think you know something, you need to look at it differently, because then you become self convinced about what's so, and you stand in that agreement, and then there there is no other position for you because you don't you can't perceive it. Want to add that in there. And of course, we have the inevitable confrontation, for as you face life, as you become more aware, you then have a confrontation. You have to deal with and face the whole of life. You certainly have opposition to your process of awareness, as that which controls everything wishes to retain the status quo. The controllers don't want individuals escaping from their controlling creational clutches. The teachers overwhelmingly representatives of this control as enforcers and regulators, as they constantly put down any dissension and insurrection as they stifle this risk-taking that is exhibited in the Dead Poets Society student group. The best method of stifling awareness is through fear, intimidation, torture and death, which rather becomes ingrained with the individual, especially subconsciously, and the fear of reprisals, for opposing the control systems in all its forms, 
remains with us lifetime after lifetime and makes a future risk-taking resistance to control less likely. We see this demonstrated here in the movie. The punishment of being paddled across the posterior for one student who moves a little too far across the line of accepted social consciousness behaviour, and then others less likely to rebel also, that such punishments don't befall them as well. And ultimately, the controllers seek to remove those they consider a threat to their controlled creational situations. They remove the rebel arousers, those that are providing opportunities beyond the restriction that most have been resigned to for lifetimes. They would fire the teacher, Mr Keating, but at least his efforts were not in vain. The students exhibited how they had become more aware as they stood on their desks in defiance as Mr Keating departed, and how they may possibly continue on with their process of risk-taking, of stepping beyond the established normals, breaking routines, and continuing to be and see more. In a way, this uh, Dead Poets Society organization it represented both the skull and bones, you could go that way, you know, eventually these kids are going to end up in Ivy League schools and they're going to be probably, uh, <clears throat> you know, in that, in that arena there. Um, or else it could go into the mystery school idea where, you know, you could go and, you know, you're outside of the, the norms and you are really seeking something uh, more. But I wanted to say also that uh, Keating you know, brought up the idea of, you know, rebellion and think for your, you know, think for yourself. Um, but not as much as what, like, the real guides do and Duane does is where he really defines it. I mean, you can say that it's a good idea, rebel it's 11 o'clock against the system. But so what do you do after that, after you rebel? You know, there's, there's so much more to it. So the, the really definition that Dwayne is giving here through his writings and his Skype meetings, it's invaluable because without it, you don't have much uh, to go on. And to figure it out yourself is really nearly impossible that I, I could see. You know, it, you can go in certain ways, but uh, it's just it's so unknown to the personal self that which you have to work off the personal self to get to more awareness. But initially that personal self has to have some, some sort of reference to work off of. So this is what the real guides come into. So they help you to, to be more self-sufficient. <clears throat> so you can be a person and you can uh, you know, establish a relationship with this isness. But initially, you really need that guidance. So, Mr. Keating, yeah, you got the idea, you know, to, to think for yourself. But what does that mean, think for yourself? If you have no ref good reference to work off of, you're just going to be referencing other, other so-called rebels or rebel rebellious ideas, which, you know, for the experience is okay, but eventually you still need something of a more of a real purpose. So go ahead, anybody. Yeah, and to decide to make the connection to the true reality life is, and like Kevin said, they could continue to decide to question these routines, this tradition, but then it becomes a decision. You have to have an adamant decidedness that this is the journey that you're gonna uh, take on and you really have to meet it head on. 
and I want to share something I suddenly understand uh, something about this movie uh, about uh, Abraham Lincoln and Neil, the person he is suicide in the end of the um, movie. Both of them, uh, I think the reptilian control controller uh, want to uh, say something and they want to put something in the deep of our mind and it is uh, if you are very intelligent and you have a, a very good people and do something and uh, um, accept do something and uh, sorry and do something about uh, what you want not the uh, order of uh, us uh, definitely uh, I I I will kill uh, the reptilian kill the people like uh, Abraham Lincoln and Neil and uh, both of them um, do something else and uh, not uh, something the order uh, in the controllers and parents something they want uh, to do uh, and try it, uh, to do it um, but after uh, do this uh, job and both and they killed by a reptilian and one of them murder and on another is suicide thank you thank you ryan do you have any more uh sections kevin another line of the robin williams mr keating a character would be how he would suggest a student of his was playing the role of the dutiful son, and as much as routine ideas can rigidly lock us in a creation, as can rigid patterns of self-consideration, which produce rigidity of experience, so can the incorporating and agreeing with and deciding on ways of a conduct that we think are expected of us according to the roles we have in relation to others the parent to child teacher to student dynamics and even though we actually are all equal free beings of light we find ourselves in these various positions in relation to others in creation for our experiences and very often we decide on again the attitudes ideas and ways of conduct that is a standard of the social consciousness in regards to these relationships the roles we play are ideas and we additionally add further ideas and considerations that go with the ideas that are the roles we assume. The overall idea is to get through all the ideas of creation to see them for what they are, which are references and not realities unless we want to make them so and beyond all ideas is the true reality life is the all is that is to be recognized through the comparison that all reference ideas provide Dwayne has said religions are probably one of the toughest if not the toughest idea to get through because we we're ingrained with these ideas of relationships the student teacher uh, especially mother mother child that's a huge ingrained uh, emotional attachment there but again it's funny being a human it's we have these things these ideas that we're so used to and take for granted where uh, the real guides being to being, you know. They've gone through the ideas of that 
you can choose relationship, but just be conscious of it. But if there is one, but being to being makes sense because then you have, again, nothing, nothing in between you, nothing blocking you or impeding you. Otherwise, these things in the relationship, like attachments, emotional feelings, any kind of attitudes, they're, they're restrictions. They end up as restrictions. They but, um, but again, it's your choice, but you can have them or not. But the being to being seems to make sense because then you have the, uh, then you're, the relationship is the support you give each other. That's the relationship you could say. And it's not the, the attitudes or the ideas in between the relationship. So that's what the real guides show us that it can be a lot uh, better for everybody that way, being to being. Also, Neil, Neil misunderstood Keating's thoughts. Uh, somehow he committed suicide because he misunderstood him. Uh, he kind of rearranged his, uh, you know, I, I think he meant, he, he, he saw Keating saying one thing and, and, you know, he didn't, and Keating didn't tell him to, you know, destroy himself, but, um, and that's the way with uh, Dwayne, the great writer and Rebazar, people take them, their, their ideas wrongly, you could say, they take them in a way that they're not really saying it because they have a filter that you're using to, to hear what like Dwayne's saying. So it's, it's better just to just let go and not try to get, you know, try to take in the information that Dwayne's and the real guides are presenting, but let go and just listen. <clears throat> Cause that's why people, they leave this because you know they think it's the information they think it's the knowledge and at a certain point they have they think enough and they think you know well, i have enough uh, i know what Dwayne's saying so i can go off now i don't need to listen to him anymore but it's more about letting go letting go of the information <laughs> really you just let it kind of pass through you take it for what it's worth as a reference, but really let let that information, because it's a stumbling block after a while, the knowledge, it'll get you into trouble because you think you know something <laughs> and you really don't, you know, you don't know anything. So um, as long as you think you know something, uh, that's gonna be in the way of you becoming more aware. Again, it's not negating it, it's just like seeing it for what it is. So. Tim, you probably have some. Did you see the movie, Tim? You probably did. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was um very interesting, and even with the guidance, the instructions. Um, let's just look at like this guy Jesus or something from the past, and his instructions from the real guides, whether it was Zodok the Great, real guide, or whatever. It is amazing with all the information he had oh. and abilities. Like he could have, um, in the etheric power realm, or he could have transformed at the present all pollution into fertilizer, or just by the vibrations of speeding up vibrations from one thing to another. But isn't it interesting that things are the way they are, no matter what the guidance is, the, his very decision, our very decision about what we're going to do. He decided um, he was going to spread the word and in his way, I guess, even though I guess his relationship with the real guides had brought him to the point where he had powers that um, the majority of beings in the physical that don't didn't have. It, it was like, what what good did he actually do for everybody? Like Mister Keating, 
what good did he actually do to change um, uh, our awareness about the real universes or, you know, this is all physical stuff. What he was talking about was about their lives in the physical, how to be. Yeah. Well, what he did was give them another experience, but yeah, for what it's worth and uh, is what they recognized from it. That's what counts. And uh, apparently the, the Todd who or Neil committed suicide, apparently didn't recognize <laughs> something greater because destroying yourself doesn't make sense really. Uh, the other ones, well, the, the, the fellow who, who fell in love with the girl, again, it's, uh, you know, these are all experiences that, um, I'll, I'll do another quote here from Mr. Keating. The powerful play goes on. You may contribute a verse. What will your verse be? I had this sensation come over me. I can create my own stride my own character, my own story, I can. You shouldn't solely focus on what has happened to you and what is supposed to happen to you. So here I see him, he's hinting at contributing something to the whole and forget the past, forget the future, but just be now with what, what you're contributing and what you can see of. And, that way others can see you too and see um, more for themselves. I, yeah, I, um, I just wanted to say something. It's not about the movie as such. It's just about basically what you were just talking about. about. But uh, yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you be now is by dropping everything. Just drop everything, all your ideas, everything. Just drop everything and just be now. Yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Oh yeah, and I did have an experience last night with Kevin. Um, it was weird. I woke up a bit frustrated, actually, because I couldn't remember it all. But I know we was uh, talking about this, about these chats, about the real to real and just about other stuff, just but there yeah, on the real side. It, it, I, I can't really remember much of it, but yeah, I remember I was speaking with Kevin quite a bit. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. But yeah, that's how I do it. You just drop everything. Any ideas? Uh, just don't. Just, don't. just drop it. Just drop the lot. Just, you know, What's been's been, what's future's, well, whatever. Just be now and just, yeah, that's how you do it. Just drop everything, any ideas, and just focus on being now. <laughs> Thank you. Drop everything and agree to feel guides agree to. Then you have focus. And maybe Jeremy can talk about focus. He was talking about intent and focus yesterday. You got something from that, I know, Jeremy. Yeah, because I, I, cause it all started where I was going over some of my experiences and I was wondering just generally, just generally about the awareness process. And I, and I was watching a little video in relation to the is and the various references from uh, Kevin's channel. And someone said the word focus, focus. And that really stuck out to it. I mean, it not literally popped out to me, but like, yes, it, it hit my being. And so I wrote it down. I wrote the word focus. I wrote, I wrote F-O-C-I-S-S-S -S -S for is. And I kept going over focus, focus. I kept thinking of the word focus. And then all of a sudden I got this image in my mind of Rebazar. Rebazar was standing there. And then he had the is like you guys do in the pictures with the white ball. He had it behind him and something said to put the focus on the is that that is the focus. And and even before that, I got a little my uh, imagination got an impression from my real awareness to just if I don't know what to imagine, if I don't know what to focus on, just imagine like a ball of light, like a center, like a ball of light to do that. And then that's that developed into with Rebazar and then he was standing there with it. And then as I was focusing 
on the focus of the is, it, it, uh, I was saying it out loud, repeating it to myself, and it changed into the word intent. And I didn't even realize it, that I started saying intent. Instead of focus, I started saying intent on the is, because that focus is your intent. You know, where you place your attention and what has that, has you captivated, that's your intent. And, and, it, and it's been fun. It's been fun to develop. I mean, I, 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 you know, just working with it, I'm starting to understand things a little more as I focus. I just, I, I, for me, like, like, let me get an example. I got, uh, I got book seven here and I just did this for myself. I put focus right there on the is just for a little reference something to imagine while I'm reading because I, I have a very active imagination when people tell me things I can see what it is that they're saying to me like if someone wants me to go find something I can see it in my mind where it is and what it is they're talking about so I can do that but something told me not to do that that just because they tell me I don't need to imagine it it kind of keeps me everywhere so just to imagine the is and so that's what I've been working on developing that focus. Dwayne used to say, give the example of the mother and the child. The mother is always focused on the child. No matter if she's doing laundry or dishes or cooking or driving her car, her attention really is on, on her kid all the time. She's always in the background. It's always there. So that's kind of how you can see how it works. No matter what you're doing, you're already, you're, you're there, you know, that's where your is, your intent. There's uh, <clears throat> three movies that came up. Dwayne suggested, uh, one was Gattaca, 1997 with e Ethan Hawke, who was in this movie. I haven't seen it, but he's, he was really uh, suggested we see it. Gattaca, G-A-T-T-A-C-A. -A -A. It's about a fellow who's a genetically modified fellow, somehow a story along those lines with Uma Thurman. So maybe that one for next week. If you... Okay, so do new you, we usually do new you, which is our connection to the, to life. I'll start it here. New you, you, you. Jeremy. New you, you, you. Kevin. New you, you, you. Ryan. New you, you, you. Mr. Pierce. Do you, you, you. Tim. Do you, you, you. Thanks everybody for being on. This is a real to real wake up. We did Dead Poets Society today. We'll be doing Gattaca next week. Uh, G-A-T-T-A-C-A -T -T -A -A with Ethan Hawke. See you next week. Thank you.